Hi guys, this is Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on the Ideal Independent 24 and we're going to be talking about hot water problems so I'm going to be doing some questions and answers on hot water related issues with this boiler so I've got my guest today Tom Gaia, and he's going to discuss well ask me questions really about this boiler on hot water issues right Tom so far away what do you want to ask right Tony um, let me pull down the yeah. front end here I just want to ask you a couple of questions regarding now I've noticed in this boiler here it doesn't seem to have any hot water sensor what controls the temperature of the hot water in this boiler right good question well first let's go to the front you've got a potentiometer for the hot water so you've got one for the heating on hot water so you just dip on that but what actually then controls the hot water well it hasn't got a hot water sensor on the hot water outlet because there's this is basically the hot water outlet right here coming straight out of the plate heat exchanger and the other side is the inlet so what controls it is going to be these two sensors on the flow return. So the electronics inside the boiler obviously are connected to this via that potential of what I showed you on the hot water. So that's what's really going to control basically the fan speed. So the fan speed will decrease and increase subject to basically the primary temperature going through the plate so that's how they've designed it on this particular boiler so there's no hot water sensor as such like on other boilers they've got a hot water sensor right got another question um, the floor turbine does this particular boiler have um like a hole sensor light that's on how do you determine whether you can know it's actually coming on or not well you can actually see it um, it's difficult to see here. Let's see, you can that's it there. Mm. If you look through the camera, and that would glow red. Right. So you know it's on and working. So that's uh, on strapped to the top of the flow turbine. Okay. Right. Uh, I think what we've got, I'll give you some more info. So, hot water related problems, so you're going to get, there's a few things in the hot water, you're going to get like stone cold Steve Austin, nothing coming at all, cold, so that means when it's at freezing cold, nothing's happening, the first thing you're going to be looking at is your flow turbine, because in the flow sequence, if you remember when you're on your training, we spoke about the flow sequence and what actually happens, what starts it. So if you go back to your train on that, the first thing is going to be the flow turbine when it's nothing happening, no activation. So you're going to look at it being red, like you said. You're going to look at that. Is it red? Mm -hmm. So that's one thing for hot water, freezing cold. Then you've got other problems. What about it's lukewarm? It's not warm enough. So, we could start with, let's look at the diverter valve. We could say, let's go to the flow pipe and see if it's going down the flow pipe. See, so you run the hot water tap, put your hand on the flow pipe, see if that's getting hot. If it is, then it's escaping down the flow and not going straight to the plate because this is your primary flow coming down into your diverter valve here so it's going to go across like that that way into the plate and then obviously go across so is that the motor that's not moving over then not necessarily it could be the um inside well behind there you've got the there's the um, cartridge so the cartridge itself could be dirt could be inside it and it's just not seating properly. Can you can you clean them out, or do you have to change them? I'd change them, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to change it, really, yeah. 
So that can give you lukewarm hot water. Um, the other problem could give you that. Lukewarm hot water could be the gas Inflate. valve. The gas valve working pressure. Suppose like the inlet is blocked up. Like we said before, it's got loads of, you know, particles in there. You're not getting a full working pressure. Mm. So you got to check your working pressure inlet. Make sure you're getting 17. Enough gas. Yeah, mm. enough gas. So yeah, you can look there. You said about the plate exchanger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be partially blocked. That can cause it. Now, what you can do, you can kind of see what's happening with that because if you listen to the fan, so you're using your ears. Now, if you attach running full belt, fan should be ramped up. That should be going at maximum. So if it like starts modulating right down, then you're looking at heat buildup because the sensors are detecting that. And so obviously if the fan starts slowing down, you're not going to get enough heat going to the plate heat exchanger and hence you leave warm water. Something else to bear in mind, it could be something as simple as this. Um, I've done a video basically showing this. It was, the shaft was broke and it was set in the wrong position. So watch out for that one. Mm. So that's a possibility. And lukewarm water. The other thing what could be, the injector could be blocked or slightly blocked. Again, giving the same problem about what I said about the gas valve, really. So I think that's the main areas about loom, lukewarm, hot water. So what else do you think could cause this lukewarm hot water situation? Could it be the pump tone that's causing this as well? Yeah, that's possible. The pump performance, it couldn't, might not be strong enough. So what we can do in this instance, you've seen me speak about this on other videos, we can take the screw out here and get a screwdriver and see if you can stop it. And if you can stop it, then it's a weak pump. Which gives you the same kind of um, situation if the plate exchange is partly blocked. That'll give you the same sort of effect, really. So, yeah, you can check the pump performance for that. Right, so I think we've covered that. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Just one more question, Tony, regarding the circulating pump. Um, generally speaking, I know they're like um, the used for the heating system, but do all boilers or combi boilers, for example, um, are they, are they, is a circulating pump used to circulate the water around the system as well? The system, but, so you're using it for heating, obviously. Yeah. So when you say the system, what do you mean? The Sorry, I mean the cold water, like, is it pumping around the, 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 the hot water system? Right. Okay, so you're saying that in hot water mode, is the pump being used? Yes. Right, okay. Well, in this particular body, yeah, it's used for heating on hot water. It's used for heat hot water because um, as it pumps basically into the return like this and into the main heat exchanger and coming out, it's forcing it through there and in a divert valve and then obviously to the plate exchanger. Now, other boilers in hot water mode don't use the pump. So, but the um, setup what you've got here is totally different. Now, I'd say it's mainly the standard efficiency bars what you use this type of feature. And try to think if there's um, a condensing bar what uses this feature, but I don't think there is. But it's mainly the standard efficiency boilers which use this. And what they're doing, basically they use like um, the multi-point water heater principle. Now again, on the um, Bar Repair XR8 training program, kind of talk about that. But I'd say it again in this instance. So on hot water, the pump would stop. It wouldn't work at all. Because what would happen, the actual mains going into the boiler would then go 
through a flow switch. That then would carry on into the main heat exchanger. Say this is the main heat exchanger, carry into that. The burner's on because this flow switch has told the burner to come on. And so the burner's running and that cold water goes into the main heat exchanger. It goes through like a coil, like a multi-point water heater and just comes out the other side hot. So it doesn't need a pump then to do that function. So the pump will stop. Because the pump will stop, the reason why it'll stop because it doesn't want to be pumping around the heating. So that's the reason why. And it's good to know this because obviously if you don't understand the boiler and how it works, then you could get caught out. So each boiler's got its own characteristics, the way it works, its own uniqueness. So you, it's good to be familiarized with the boilers. So in this library, what I'm making on different types of boilers, you'll see this over time and you'll get a better understanding about different boilers. Right, now um, I think we're coming to the end of this part on the hot water situation. Have you got any more questions? Yeah, there's one more thing, Tony, that sort of um, kind of um, intrigues me. Uh, basically, in this particular box, because it doesn't have like a hot water sensor, I mean, if the water was getting really warm inside here, um, uh, what, what's going to control um, the, the, the bother from either staying on or switching off? Is it the primary sensors that's going to be doing that? Or? Well, yeah, the sensors are what's going to de determine the temperature control um, to stop overheating. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Right. But if they fail the sensors, I suppose, um, and it's going to carry on heating, basically. So, obviously, if it did... I'm sure in the electronics they'll have something there which will stop it and then it's going to shut down and it will show a code, error code. Do you know what the error code is for the hot water one? No. Well, on overheating, um, no, actually, I don't think I do. I'll have to look in the manual for that one. But I've never seen one actually overheat. So I think they are pretty good on actually preventing it from actual overheating. Okay. Yeah, so going back to what I just said there, I think what they would do as well, if there was some like rapid build up, because these two sensors here, left and right, these are constantly monitoring each other. So I think they work like twins. So if one of them went AWOL, I think, um, the electronics would detect some sharp increase of its temperature and if it did then it will shut it down so i think that's how it kind of uses a bit of a fail safe between the two because they definitely do work together okay. and one more thing on that point you could check the resistance reading between the two so the basically should be the same so if there was like a real big indifference and you would test these basically disconnect them from the pipe work and then do it so it's the same temperature so you should be getting a very similar reading but if there's not that would be the one what's going to give you the problem and obviously you're going to have to change it now to finish off on the hot water um, the other fault what you can get is basically this actuator not working whatsoever so that can fail so normally it's in the hot water mode by default but it could jam and fail in the heating mode, so it could be stuck. So it's going to be a bit like the diverter valve situation passing. So if it's stuck, it's, again, it's going to push it around the heating instead of the hot water. So you're going to have to basically test this. You can remove, take, there's a clip, take that off, yeah. look at the actuating motor, run the hot water and see if it's in the right position. And that will tell you if it is or not. Now, if there's no power going to it, then it's going to be the main board. And if there's power going to it, then it's going to be the actuator. So that's the other thing to look out for. Okay. Right, you've taken this off. So what did you want to know about this? Uh, just testing the, um, the, the, if the motor is faulty, Tony. Um, you would basically be putting your uh, multimeter on the two outer ones, is that hot water and heating mode? Or? No. No. What you've got is, um, the two out ones are the two lights, basically, and the middle's the neutral. 
Obviously, you've got one pin in one and one in the other. So, which, which side is the hot water side? What you would do, just base a bit of trial and error, really. So, you run it, say, on hot water. You put it in the middle and across, say, the right one. Yeah. And then try it. And then, if you're not getting no voltage... On the other side. Flick it over and put it on the other side. If it was getting voltage, then you know for that mode, it's that one. And then, you just basically put it in heating mode. And then you know then it's going to be the other side. So if you wasn't getting power, say in one of the modes, then it's going to be the board. The board, right. Because you should be getting power on both on sides. On both sides, right. Yeah, okay. so that's how you know. Yeah. Right. So basically if you're getting power on both sides, you're changing the... the, the actuator. Actuator. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Hope it's informational for you guys watching this. Our questions and answers video on this particular boiler on this particular fault as well any more questions there was one thing tony um i know that some people are not very good with multimeters and my question is um do a lot of engineers just change rather than actually testing the actuator um and the cartridge to just change both parts well obviously if they don't if they guess and just go well it's that then yeah, that's what's going to happen. They're not going to do enough testing and diagnostics. And that's because they don't really understand how to use a multimeter properly, how to diagnose properly. So basically, if you're getting power from a PCB to the actuator, and that's getting power to the actual diverter valve, then you know it's the cartridge that's faulty. Yeah, if you're getting, as we said, that we do the left and right, if we're getting them both satisfied, then we know we're getting power from the board and it must be. And if, the, say like we go to the actuator, what we'd do, we would Test take, on there. basically you take the, there's a clip behind there, yeah. take that off and then you observe it. So you can have that plugged on. Pin. You can see the pin going out. Yeah, you yeah. can see the pin going in and out. So if it's not moving, and you know you've done your test here on a, the, the multimeter, mm. no moving no activation then you know it's the actuator right so um yeah it's just learning the little test procedures and techniques and this is what we're doing on the library so that's going to be it on this particular video regarding any the hot water issues so if you like what you've seen just recommend me to your other colleagues to subscribe to the Bar Repair Library. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. <music>